Yo, what's up, dude? <laughs> How's it going? Uh, I thought I would come on here and show you this. This is the latest from the Harley Benton line at Toman. Music and Germany. And um, EMGs. I, I like when they use EMGs. So uh, mahogany body, mahogany neck, ebony fretboard. 22 super jumbo frets um it's a tusk um graph tech or graphite uh, uh, uh not um grover I'll, I'll get better close-ups of these but grover uh locking tuners uh again it's a little it's a little tricky to turn this one upside down actually has a tummy cut on the back and oh there's the battery slot for the uh, for the EMGs, there you go. You can see right there, a very small, tiny little mark. It actually got damaged in shipping. Uh, UPS managed to put a, quite a beating on the box. I was, I, I was bracing for a lot more damage. I have to say it was the styrofoam that saved it that acted as a cushion because um, they really did beat the, beat the box up pretty bad. I got two guitars. One box was fine and the guitar was all fine. This box was far more beat up, and um, and uh, and had a, a tiny bit of shipping damage. And and I do mean tiny. I don't even know if you can really see it. See it right there at the edge. That little mark. That. Uh, EMG eighty one. EMG eighty one in the bridge. Uh, EMG sixty. Uh, in the neck, uh, master volume, uh, master tone, and uh, three-way switch. And uh, what else am I missing? Um, you know, a two pneumatic style bridge. Uh, it's available, uh, dot inlays, uh, it's available in um, four colors. You got the black, there is a blue, which is called like, I think it's Benton blue, our Holly Benton blue. It's kind of like a sky blue, it's a very light blue. Um, they do a white, and then they do a pearl, a uh, pink, like a, like a, almost like a um, a very very light pink, and it really is like the essence of pink. I actually have another guitar that's of that same color, and it's more like pinkish, right? It's like almost like a a pinkish hue to a white. It's pink. Trust me, when you look at it, you're like, oh no, that's pink, but it's not pink. It's more like a pinkish white. It's kind of hard to explain, but. Um, I went with black. I went with black. And then, of course, at the bottom, you see there, they make a little cut, right? So the shape isn't quite the same. Right? They, they're trying to mix it up a little bit. And, uh, and there you go. Um, my biggest complaint about the guitar, this jack right there. I hate that. I really, 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 just put me down on record, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like it on my gem. I don't like it on my J Custom. In fact, I was so angry that J Custom did that. It's like, just just put the jack on the bottom. That's a terrible design. People say, like, the, the jack on the front sticking out because you can step on it and snap it off. Well, try angling it in the opposite direction and then stepping on it. That's why everyone wraps it behind their their cord here. And they're like, you're supposed to wrap it behind the cord. I'm like, I never did that. Yeah, that, that's something you came up with. Or someone with an SG came up with because they, they were tired of stepping on the cord. It's supposed to be on the bottom. And then when you step on it, it pulls out <laughs> and falls to the ground. I wish they'd just make them magnetic. But they probably can't because of interference. But you know what I'm saying. It's, um, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, my least favorite jack design. But, uh, you know, it, 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 I guess the Explorer shape sort of lends itself to that, but uh, put, put me in the no column for that style. I, uh, uh, I am not a fan. Um,
The neck is pretty thin, uh, side to side. It's nice and uh, narrow. It's a very slim neck. Um, they call it a slim taper. It's a little bit, it's got a bit of a butt on it, right? It's not a flat, it's like, like my, my Epiphone there, it's a, it's a flatter back, more of like I would call, they call that a slim taper as well. But I would say that that, it, it's got a little bit flatter on the, a little bit flatter on the back. It eventually curves around, gets a little flat, and then starts to curve back up again. This is rounded. This is full on curved. I'm feeling no flatness on the back of this neck at all, you know, um, much more rounded neck. It's not a thin neck. This is, this ain't no wizard neck, you know, this is more like, I wouldn't quite call it medium C. I'd call it sort of like small C or like regular C or like modern C, you know. Um, and it feels a little chunkier up here than maybe it would, you know what I'm saying? Like it, like it has a, a fast increasing rate of thickness. Um, can maybe compare it to some other brands. Feels a little bit more girth up here than maybe, uh, you know, you would on, uh, you know, even, even a guitar like that there, you know. Um, it, it's a comfortable neck though. It, at first I was like, oh, this is a little, a little chunky, but then I was like, you know, it's really not because the side to side is so narrow. And that, that is what I like. I like the, it's the side to side that gets me more in trouble than the front to back, right? I can deal with a thick uh, front, you know, d difference between the, the front of the, you know, the fret and the back of the neck versus side to side. A little easier, you know? You know, I'd rather, I'd rather put a bat in my hand than an oar in my hand, if that makes sense. Both are extremes, but you, you get the idea. Pickups sound great, though. I know everyone's going to look at this guitar and they're going to say James Hetfield, right? It's black, it's an Explorer style, you know, guitar. But I always, when I see Explorers, I hate this, I think of Eddie Van Halen, <laughs> right? I think of him on, is it Women and Children First, you know? And, and he had a few pictures back in the day of him playing an Explorer and, uh, you know, I think of, of, of EVH, but I, I know that's that's probably pretty rare. Most people don't associate EVH with the Explorer style. I'm probably, you know, rather alone with that. But uh, uh, I don't, I'm not a big Metallica guy, although I do think James Hetfield is the best guitar player in that band, you know, in, in my opinion. Uh, let's try a clean sound. I have like a little, um, you know, like a little... Basement, although I might be, might be overdriving it a bit. Let me just turn my my input down a hair. There we go. Felt like I was overdriving it a bit. Here's uh, both pickups. I think the I, again I really like when uh, I think I've said this in other videos when Harley Benton uses EMG. You know their Roswell pickups are okay, but I always felt like that was the weakest link in their in their build, right? 
as their use of just uh, in-house brand pickups. Uh, the addition of the EMGs, I think, just takes away that last, like, should I get a Harley bent in? Because right away I feel like I'm going to have to change the pickups, and that's a project, and now I'm tacking on another 150 to $200. You know, to put new pickups in, at least 150 for the pickups, right? You're probably looking at, or 120, like, you know, like 65, 70 bucks a pickup. That sounds about right for Seymour Duncans or DeMarzios or anything like that, you know? And then, of course, uh, you know, you might want to change the electronics, and by the time you're all done with it, the other thing I really like about this um, is the no friction pots. I am a huge fan of no load pots. <laughs> And um, they, that's what they use. Um, and I, I'm a fan of that. Some people say, oh, it feels cheap, it feels chintzy when you, when you don't use a, you know, a firm pot. But I, I, don't, I don't agree. I feel like it gets in the way of me turning my volume knob on and off and constantly working the volume knob. Um, I, I don't care for the, the heavier, grease-filled, you know, hard-to-turn um, pots. Um, I give me low friction. I'm I'm with I'm with EVH on that one. Low friction. All right, let's try a um, another one here. This is a this is a like a more of like a Marshall. Although I think it might have a boogie in one of the ears. EMG. Just sound great. And maybe one more. This is, um, that's the one I normally use, like a dual heavy rig. There you go. I'm hitting my mic here. Harley Benton EX84. I, I tell you, I didn't like the headstock at first, but it's growing on me. I, I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. I did not like the headstock when I looked at it in the photos, but when it showed up, I was like, you know what? That's actually not bad. And I think it's because it's a little stubby. I think if it was if it was even longer, I, I, I don't think I'd like it as much. It would probably give me, you know... Uh, some serious neck dive. Although I'm feeling, feeling a little, a little bit. Not really. No, it's it's pretty balanced. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? They're, they're new. Uh, ebony fretboard. If I didn't mention that, and um, all mahogany construction. Uh, I will leave a link in the description if you want to check out uh, more. And there you have it, Harley Benton EX84. And I have one other Harley Benton here to show you. I'll yeah, probably, you know, get it out uh, maybe next week. Here you go. All right, dudes. As always, thanks so much for hanging out. And rock on. <laughs>